few days later, I was in good enough shape. My two brothers and I got on the first truck, American truck, with two people back to Czechoslovakia because we were more interested in anything else to find our family. We wanted to go home, even though we knew what was happening, but still, everybody thought maybe there's a chance that somebody would come home. I walked to the farm, and uh, <laughs> they went berserk. They screamed, they yelled, you're supposed to be dead. They killed 15 survivors that came back. I decided to go and start again to search for my family. I went to camps in Austria, the displaced persons camps. Everywhere I went to, I registered my name, checked the list for names of family. I met with my brother again. We started our journey to Palestine. Palestine in that time, in 1946, was ruled by the British. My boat was the last boat. After that, any boat that came into the shores of Israel, they took them to Cyprus. I fought on the War of Independence, 1948 till uh, 49. After that, I joined the Israeli Navy. I stayed in that camp nearly four years. We had applied for visa to the United States and I was granted a, uh, a visa only about four years later. It took four years to, to find our way to the United States. Finally, in December, a whole bunch of us survivors' kids got on a boat on the Queen Mary to come to America. Just to see the Statue of Liberty, just to see the shores of America was truly a miracle of all miracles. My uncle found out that I'm still alive and he sent me a affidavit to come to the States. And a friend of mine who was a butcher, he was in a concentration camp. He wanted to go to Florida. And I said, Florida, Miami. I said, when are you going? Take me with you. I had made some friends in California who came back east as well. And they took me to a dance on May 15th of 1947, where I met my husband. And exactly to a year, November 14th, 1948, we got married. And I have lived happily ever after. But thanks God, in the 50 years, we brought a brand new generation. When you speak to most of the survivors, their children are their life. I've been through the whole civil rights thing for 20 years of my life. And when I came here, I got very much involved with women's rights. We were just beginning to talk about the ERA, which was a very good thing. I started in the construction business. It was very hard in the beginning and we started, the community was very good and they helped me to get on my feet. And then I felt that I have to give back something to the community. I felt to get involved in politics. I was vice mayor of the city and in 93 I decided to retire. I would have no hesitancy if America would be in danger to give my life for it. Because it's the bastion of freedom and it's the only place where Every person, no matter what nationality, what race, what creed, what sex, has an opportunity to succeed. And uh, we should succeed. I 
I feel that our survivors are heroes, that they did survive, that they do tell their stories. We want them to remember. We don't want the world to forget. We want to make sure that we tell whoever wants to listen. My message to the world is simply the tolerance of one another. If we let it, it'll happen again. When my grandfather squeezed my hand and said, you're watching the beginning of the end, you're watching the start of World War II, there are things like that happening all the time where I want to squeeze somebody's hand and say, my God, this has got to be stopped right now. And I just hope there are people who will continue to stop it. <laughs>